I am glad to have this opportunity of expressing my high appreciation of the honor extended to me many years ago by the Royal Swedish Academy of Science by enrolling me amongst its members. Religious faith to W. H. Bragg was the willingness to stake his all on the hypothesis that Christ was right, and tested by a lifetime's experiment in charity. Thanks to the high standing which science has for so long attained and to the impartiality of the Nobel Prize Committee, the Nobel Prize for Physics is rightly considered everywhere as the highest reward within the reach of workers in natural philosophy. You will also allow me to thank the Academy for inviting me to lecture in Stockholm, for its hospitality, and for the opportunity afforded me for admiring the charm of your people and the beauty of your country. The mystery of life is certainly the most persistent problem ever placed before the thought of man. There is no doubt that from the time humanity began to think it has occupied itself with the problem of its origin and its future which undoubtedly is the problem of life. The inability of science to solve it is absolute. This would be truly frightening were it not for faith. The more I work with the powers of nature, the more I feel God's benevolence to man. The closer I am to the great truth that everything is dependent on the eternal creator and sustainer, the more I feel that the so-called science, I am occupied with, is nothing but an expression of the supreme will, which aims at bringing people closer to each other in order to help them better understand and improve themselves. I am proud to be a Christian. I believe not only as a Christian, but as a scientist as well. A wireless device can deliver a message through the wilderness. In prayer the human spirit can send invisible waves to eternity, waves that achieve their goal in front of God. If we consider what science already has enabled men to know the immensity of space, the fantastic philosophy of the stars, the infinite smallness of the composition of atoms, the macrocosm whereby we succeed only in creating outlines and translating a measure into numbers without our minds being able to form any concrete idea but we remain astounded by the enormous machinery of the universe. I am glad to have this opportunity of expressing my high appreciation of the honor extended to me many years ago by the Royal Swedish Academy of Science by enrolling me amongst its members.